Call all you me how we buy Hashem Yahushua by Hashem Rekapadash. Double honesty, apostles and elders of great millstone rule well over the flock. Shalom and salutation to you, brothers, all your personal words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwaf listening and paying attention. The uh, Israelites that are scattered abroad, Shalom. I just had woke up from a dream in which I was in an auditorium similar to this picture right here except I was sitting somewhere near the third row in the front and this auditorium was filled first of all it's, it's the dream started off I was back in New York or I was just um thinking about the brothers back in New York where I started at GMS New York that's home for me. I'm now relocated to GMS Bur Birmingham. I live in Birmingham now. And I was just in a dream, just um, <laughs> saying shalom to a brother. Shout out to that brother. The brother's name is Amwa Amnawa Allah. And, um, and, you know, you know, I didn't think it was always going to be uh, difficult to move away necessarily from, um, GMS New York, I always, you know, pretty much planned it to be a um, a light thing. It wasn't even that planned at all. It was pretty much the spirit just opened up those type of doors and closed others. And um, either way, you know, I said shalom to the brother. And um, a lot of brothers was there, but the kind of dream just translated to where I'm at now and Birmingham and um I remember you know seeing a few of the brothers I saw here in Birmingham but and then I just started seeing all type of faces I didn't recognize and once I got to where we were going I was sitting in the third row of this auditorium and I look back and I see faces the whole auditorium was filled with people <laughs> It was filled with people. And when I say it was filled with people, I mean, it was filled with Hebrew Israelites. But some of these Hebrew Israelites didn't look like your typical Hebrew Israelites. What I mean is, there were Hebrew Israelites that were, that can pass for white. There were Hebrew Israelites that can pass for, um, you know, that, that pass for Latino. Latinos and so-called so-called white people, so-called Indian. It was a, you know, and I didn't want to be staring at anybody, but I remember in the dream, I kind of looked back, and I just kept looking back, and I looked to my right. I ain't, I didn't recognize the Jake on my right. I looked to my left. I ain't recognize the Jake on my left. And I was waiting for the brother, the hair brothers, to come in, as if you know, class would begin. I was waiting for the brother Aram and um, Kornawaf and my side to come in and like begin this lesson. And I look back again and I just see more faces. And it's Akim and it's Akwaf. That's what really surprised me. They got their wives were there too. And you know, at Great Millstone, we don't <laughs> bring wives to camp. But this wasn't camp. This was like this this was different this was like an indoor right it wasn't on no street we was indoors we were in an auditorium style just like this seats and i kept looking back and i see more people in in my aqua and everybody was chatting everybody was getting along the, the mood and the energy in the room was serene calm peaceful readiness alertness I must have looked back about 10 times Just like where am I It was like one of them lucid dreams <laughs> But I knew I was about to You know I was in a classroom setting Where the truth was going to be But it was packed Hey man it's truth We don't even know I can we I mean For the brothers that do And they constantly on it like that and you ready? You know how filled, how easy it is to fill these seats. But 
It doesn't mean like we got to be in a classroom together, but the spirit just had it with that 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 dream. We was all in a classroom, and I'm telling you, every time I look back, it was so many faces. And everybody was just getting along, chilling, and it was people who you would consider today, they would call so-called white people, so-called Arab, but they was Hebrew Israelites. How do I know? I just know. Now, you understand that Great Millstone have been teaching for a long time, which is a stumbling block to many, that Israel is a scattered nation, is a scattered people. Majority of our people, yes, we over here serving captivity here in America. But you go to West Africa, where they where they took us off of them slave ships, you go and find our people there. All the way down to Central and South America, our people is obviously there, part, according to the 12 tribes sign. But outside of the 12 tribes sign, our people are scattered in all of these different lands. And because we know now that it only take one or two generations to turn a jet black or a dark brown Jake, two generations later, he looks, his, his grandson can look like a complete Edomite. Brothers always exposing Blake Griffins of the world and the Drakes of the world. But there's more and there's more and there's more and there's deeper. And think about, that's two generations. Think about 40, gener you know, 30 generations since World War II, maybe five generations. Because where was Jake during World War II? Where were we, you know? Let's go backwards even further. The Berbers and the, when we were dwelling in the land of Israel and conquering other nations around us. Let's, let's, let's take it forward to the time of the Dark Ages when we were r raping and ravishing lands like Sicily and Italy. And there's a famous quote by Napoleon Bonaparte, the emperor of France. He said, everything south of the, um, there's, a, there's a mountain ridge somewhere dividing France from Spain. And he said, Everything south of the uh, this mountain, this famous mountain ridge, is black. And brothers always put in the common boy who that what what he. That's a quote by Napoleon. He recognized that every person, people with the south of this in Spain at that time in Portugal were black, were dark skinned Because, you know, the the through the under the um under the name or the banner of uh, Moors, Jake was conquering. Jake were conquerors. That old saying Hannibal at the gates. Hannibal was a, if I'm not mistaken, a Berber or at least a Northern African from uh, Carthage, I believe. He, he, he made it all the way to Rome. This history is more vast, man, than they, they will ever acknowledge. Check out the book, Nature Knows No Color Lines. Right? It's, you know, and so there's 12 tribes. And the scriptures tell you we're going to be as the sands of the sea. So let's get into it, right? Let's see here how I can do this. Beautiful. This is Isaiah 11 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. We always bring out his people. The Lord is going to do this. This is future prophecy now. But his people, his is a possessive pronoun. A possessive pronoun. Belonging to. Belonging to. The remnant of his people. A remnant is a small portion of a whole. A small remaining quantity of something. The remains, the leftovers, the leavings. The rest, right? So, a second time. The second time because the first time happened in Egypt. This great deliverance, the first great deliverance that all nations knew about. And they saw the glory and the power and the might of the father, of the power the God of Israel and they all recognized it and this is where the Lord might you know first obtained fame the God of Israel Alashadia terrible demon like power that was the first time 
in the book of Exodus, you read about that. He set his hand to recover the, a remnant of his people then. And now, the Lord said it. The second time is when he's going to do it. And that's future prophecy. It says, which shall be left in this area. You find out where Assyria is, right? That's between Iraq and Turkey, modern day. Iraq and Turkey. Who's over there? What they look like? From Egypt. Egypt was always Egypt and was always will always be, right? There was Mizraim at one point, but the Greeks actually called it Egypt. And you see where that is, northern Africa, right near Israel. It's understanding that we had plenty of colonies throughout the scriptures. You'll read Israel's Israelites have in so called, you know, and and the real Jews, dark skinned, so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We've always set up in Egypt throughout our time, especially the southern kingdom. Alexandria, right? And then we went all the way into Egypt, past Egypt, all the way to the left. It says Pathros, but you see here, Pathros. You see this whole land on the top? It says Berber. Those are Israelites. Those are Israelites. The people that ended up conquering a lot of Italy. The Berbers. That's a whole history of a, of a dark-skinned race of Israelites. It says Pathros, right? So that's also in Africa. Cush, also in Africa. Elam. Right. And now the Kushites are not Israelites. The Elamites are not Israelites. These are lands of other heathen nations that our people are scattered in. Going back to the curses. Elam, ancient civilization. Right. You see where Elam is? It's it's it's, it's north of so it's right on the Persian Gulf. It's right on the Persian Gulf. That it is historically um, north of Babylon, east of Babylon, historically um, today, uh, Iran and Iraq, mainly Iran. Shinar, this is all the places where the Lord and future prophecies is going to deliver uh, Israel from. Shinar, you can see here in this picture, it's Syria. Or also, a.k.a. Mesopotamia. Shinar. The land of Syria. It's a big land. Stretching all the way to Babylon. Well, no, those are your rivers. So, Syria. Hamath. Once again, all the places where the Lord is going to deliver our people as well. So, the city still called, keeps the same name. It's a west, it's west central Syria. And the islands of the sea. Islands. Anyone seen a video of the Portuguese woman who's a Hebrew Israelite? I mean, I'm sorry, the Filipino. There's a large Hebrew Israelite Filipino uh, community out there in the Philippines. But then you're going to have Japan. Then you're going to have Indonesia. Then you're going to have Jakarta. I think oh, that's a city. Then you're going to have these little smaller islands, especially the Caribbean islands, right? These are where Israelites will be delivered a second time or recovered. The Lord will set his hand again to recover, recover Israel from these places where, where we're left. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel. Ensign, flag, standard. Standard is a flag bearer. Somebody who holds up the flag with somebody and during the time of war, you knew where you're supposed to be, you knew the direction, you knew what that flag meant. It was a symbol. The symbol is this word. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. They're being assembled. But the Lord is going to ultimately be that person who comes back and does this deed. It's not going to be a we're going to get together type of thing on the internet. It's not going to be just that we're going to gather at, you know, for anybody getting excited. Well, one day we'll all be sitting. I pray we ain't even got a good, I pray we can skip that step, you know. 
I pray that this, this don't never happen and we just skip that step. If it's just a dream, let me, with the Lord kind of showing me all the different faces of people that believe. And where they from. And this is how the scriptures back it up here. And shall assemble the outcast of Israel. So you have Israelites, but you got the outcast. A person who is rejected, who has been rejected by society or a social group. An outcast of Israel. You got a lot of people who are coming from these lands who would be rejected by any old Hebrew Israelites. Black Hebrew, you know. People that only believe that Hebrew Israelites are black and dark skinned. Which there's a large percentage of them out here Dwindling percentage And gathered together the dispersed of Judah From the four corners of the earth You can't tell me right now That just looking at the 12 tribe sign You would believe that there's Jews that's going to be delivered From over there in China You have to have your senses exercised To to how the Lord operates and what sea lines mean, right? And phenotype, how that changes, and that the sea passes through the Father. You got to have an understand, understanding of progenity or um, by the seeds of the Father, the scripture says. Let's get that. Let's get that. Because the Bible goes by the seeds of the fathers. And lineage goes by the seeds of your father. Numbers 1 and 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared the, their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. Pedigree. Father. See what pedigree mean. It's not just puppy chow. Pedigree definition. A register recording a line of ancestors. The pedigree traces the family back to the 18th century. An ancestral line, a.k.a. lineage. Your lineage... Your ancestors are goes back to your father's house, not your mom's house. Get it now? I don't care how much you love moms. You're supposed to love moms. But that ain't who you are. Neither man or female. You are not who your mother is in her lineage. You're not of her heritage and pedigree. You're not of her lineage. You have your father's lineage. By the seed line of the father's. Says and it came to so that's how we understand that all it takes is one Jake to be transplanted into the middle of I don't know the middle of Sweden and if he's if he got women like that or if he's just bouncing around like that or if he's just you know spending nights out. Enough nights out, and you're going to have a small population of Israelites out there, right? With fair skinned Israelites. So, it's just, and their sea line is forever going to go back to it. That this, a J. That's just how it works. That's why there's this parable of the wheat and the tears. The tears and the wheat grow up together, don't cut them down, but as they grow, once they're fully grown, that's when you know. And the angel is going to do that job, not us. You know, dividing the wheat from the tear, the heathens from Israelites, and because you got dark skinned Edomites out here passing for Jake. It's another stumbling block. Isaiah 27 and 12, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river un unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel, the gathering back of the tribes. And, it shall, and it's like one by one because it'll be a brother pop up. New brother pop up in Miami. It'll be a new brother pop in that pop up in Dallas. Then a new brother pop. Then the next brother pop up. And it's like sequencing, but it's in different 
then the next brother pop up in Birmingham, then the next brother pop up in the UK, then the next brother pop up in Amsterdam. On the same day, but later on, the next brother popped up in Jamaica, and then a sister popped up in Florida, and then, uh, you know, and it's, just, it's just how the word work, one by one, or each other in Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mountain of Israel, of Jer at Jerusalem. So we understand that the outcasts, we're not dealing with other nations, we're not dealing with the Gentiles, we're dealing with Israelite foreigners who are also called Gentiles in English, but we're called Hellenin, Hellenin or Hellenistas. All right, Greek-speaking Jews, we understand how the customs that you go by will make you an outcast. The beliefs that you have can make you an outcast. So you need to return. There has to be a great returning back. And only Israel is going to return back, according to prophecy. This thing has only been for Israel the whole time. Isaiah 43 and 5, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Well, what's over there on the west? This is America. Americas. It's over there on the east. Asia. Europe. Mesopotamia and those lands. Africa. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back, bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. And in that lesson, the auditorium that I was at, there were women, women and men there, all coming dressed in, you know, women had wrapped heads, but they had some of them had pale skin. And I just kept looking back at them like, what is going on here? I was a little thrown off because I didn't recognize anyone. Even everyone that is called by my name for I have created. And that's all it is. The ones that is called by the Lord's name. And that's Israel. Yasha Allah, princes of power. We got his name written on us. Even Yahweh, the, the tribe. Is the most high thanks it has the name of the Father on, in it. For I have created him for my glory, for I have formed him, yea, I have made him with the Lord's property. We just return him back. He put us away for a little while while we was acting up, and now it's time to return back. Jeremiah 3 and 18 In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I give them, have given them for an inheritance unto your fathers. Well, are we technically in North America? Isn't the land, this the land that we'll be gathered together and then we'll come out of so that we can be given an inheritance? Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning. So there will be a doing away with the Edomites, so-called white people's rulership and kingdom. And the Lord will deliver that inheritance into his people's hand. And the inheritance includes rulership, power, order. The inheritance includes um, the laws in our inward parts, our heritage back, peace, harmony, eternal life, rest. The inheritance also includes slaves in many lands to conquer and pillage. Jeremiah 12 and 14. And I'll stop after this. Let's save the Lord power against all my evil neighbors. And we got plenty of them. All the nations in which we gathered out of that I named earlier, Elam and Cush, those are our enemies. Because we don't have any friends of other nations. If we did, for one, you could say somebody would have came to our rescue. But none did. The scripture says in Deuteronomy 28, 68, um, you show, um, I'll take you captives by ship, right? And then it says, and none shall buy you. 
So when we went on those slave ships and you came over here to Americas, nobody came for our rescue. Nobody freed us. The only reason we got out was because the Lord had them write a declaration or emancipation, which turned basically turned everybody into slaves and done away with hardcore slavery. But nobody, no nation freed us. So they're all our enemies. And they all profit off of us to this day. The scripture tell you about the parable of how Israel would be in this time. Where the Lord mentions Lazarus, the poor man. And says even the dogs lick their wounds. The dog symbolizes the other nations. That exploit us in our wounded state. We're wounded people. We're plagued people. And the nations make their money off of us. And many of them know who, who we are. And wouldn't even tell us. They have not caused them to be um, put in their graves. It says in Revelation. So the wandering Jews just remain wandering. As long as if the nations had anything to do with it. That touch that the inheritance. That touch the inheritance which have. I have caused my people Israel to inherit. So the Lord's going to cause us to inherit back what they took from us. The, the inheritance that we have was it is that land. And is this heritage, the laws, statutes, commandments, this way of life that we're relearning. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. So it's going to be a, it's a great scattering of Israelites among all the heathen to this day, to this day. And it shall come to pass after that I have plucked them out. I will return and have compassion on them and will bring them again, every man to his heritage, every man to his land. The heritage, the land, the plucking out of Israel and bringing us, right, bring us again. The heritage property that is or may be inherited. Property that is or may be inherited. Birthright. How about this archaic, a special or individual possession in allotted portion? And why is it allotted? Because everybody has their own. God's love remains your heritage. So this is a special individual. So you can't all have our heritage. Now you'll come asking, how can you please the Father? And we'll tell you, we'll give you those answers. We'll train up the nations, right? Right? We will be the mountain that all the nations come to. Seek answers for, in order for them to have peace. But that's our heritage that the Lord's going to give us again, including our land, Israel. Lord willing, this video is out of fine. And to the point, till next time, Shalom. Kwame Shalom.